Hi, uh, this is Barton with the Snowflake Server app. Today I want to demonstrate how to set up a Node.js server on OpenShift that's backed by MongoDB and Redis. You should be able to take your Snowflake mobile app or any other app you're working on and use this server. So it'll show you how to get set up, how to write the code for it, how it all gets put together. Anyway, I hope it's something that you can enjoy. So you want to go over to GitHub and go to the Snowflake Happy OpenShift project and go to the setup and down to the OpenShift setup. So I've already created an account in OpenShift. You can see it here. If I click the applications, there's not one here. So we're going to go ahead and add that. If you're just starting out, you'll want to add the RHC command to the command line so that you can use it. And if you've already logged into OpenShift, then you probably have already created a domain, a domain name. Mine is Barton Hammond. But if you haven't, then go ahead and do that step. So the next step we're going to do is um, to create our initial app. Um, it's going to be called My Snowflake. And this dash S back here says scaling. Now, OpenShift will allow you to run three gears for free. Um, if you want to scale, you can scale just within those three gears. But this app, the way it's going to be set up, we're going to use all three gears. One gear for Node, one gear for Mongo, one gear for Redis. But the app is going to be set up so that you can scale. So if your app starts growing and you need better performance or you need to scale, you don't have to change any of your configuration. You can just add more gears and it'll all happen automatically. So let's get started. So go to your command prompt and open up let that run. Now this is going to take a little while. It's got to add the app to, to uh, OpenShift. It's got to create a GitHub account and put your repository in it. And then it's going to copy the GitHub repository down to your local box. It'll be in the directory that you call the, the um, app. In my case, it'll be called uh, My Snowflake, as you can see there. So I'm going to pause this until this co completes running. Okay, it looks like the Snowflake app has been created. It gives you some information here about the MongoDB, what the admin, what the password is, what the database name is. Uh, also gives you some information about what where you want to go to look at the app, um, how you can SSH there, and, and we'll SSH in, in a little bit here. Let's go out to uh, OpenShift and uh, look at that. And if we go to the applications now, um, we can see that we have my snowflake and you can see that it has node the web load balancer and the mongodb so we have two out of three gears already being used and in the next step we're going to use the third gear so um, we are now at this step here where we're going to add the cartridge for redis so just copy that command and change back you can change into your snowflake it doesn't really matter but um, I will it just makes me feel safe and just paste that in there and this will take a few minutes to run so we're gonna pause okay so the redis um, database has been installed now and you can see again what the password is and what what all you can do let's go back out and look in OpenShift now and see what that looks like and so if I uh, refresh this page we now have redis so we've used all three of our our gears um, notice that these will scale but um, they're not going to scale when we've used all of our gears um, if you need any if you have any problems when you're uh, running the command from the command line and and it gives you some kind of weird error message what i've noticed sometimes is just that it fails to install your github uh, to clone your git repository into your local um, uh, um, environment. If that's the case, just take this uh, source code link here and just get clone with it. Um, you might run into that problem. Um, it's hard to say. Okay, so the next command now we're going to do is we're already in the Snowflake app. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually get the code that is the happy server serving the Snowflake mobile app. So just copy that and go to your command line. Let's clear this so it looks a little bit easier. And that runs instantly. This next command pulls all that code from that repository and loads it locally right here. Okay, 
you have a little merge so quit out of there and then if you look at your git status um, you're ready to push but we don't want to push yet now when you push uh, from your repository here you're pushing back to open shift not to a github repository you know that you're used to but it's the open shift repository but before we push we need to update the um, config js file so follow the instructions uh, in the documents and update your your or change the example config file and put in your information in there and let me take a minute to do that okay I've copied my config file and let's just verify that it's here and you can see it says source config so let's add that in and commit it and now we can push and now again uh, just to clarify, we're pushing to the repository on OpenShift, and they have hooks in place to kick off the build. Uh, they'll stop the databases, uh, Mongo and Redis, they'll stop the happy server, and then they'll install all the stuff that's in the o NPM. So um, it, when you get done with this command, you'll have your server running on OpenShift. So come back in a minute. Okay, the uh, push to OpenShift has completed. Um, down at the bottom here, it says it's a success, um, and the activation was successful. And if we want to go look at it, we can SSH in. We'll SSH in in a second here to show you how easy that is and what you can do. But let's go look at the app. So go back over to OpenShift. Um, I'm going to open this up in a new tab for that link. And what I've done with the Happy Shirt server is I took the readme file and I serve it up as my index page. So this is the same file that you'll see over at GitHub. Um, it Same thing. Um, in fact, it even looks better. But um, anyway, so that's one of the things you can get. The other thing you'll want to look at is something that's really neat, if you've never seen it before, but this is the documentation. Um, the documentation is done by Swagger, and it's it's really nice. And, and I have it all uh, documented uh, in the source code. You can read all that. Um, and what what you can do with all these uh, with with the Swagger is when you see the endpoint, you can actually use the endpoint. Let's look at the um, the environment. So it gives you some notes about uh, what the implementation is, what the response should be, and you can just click the button to try it out. What it does, it shows you exactly what you um, do if you want to use curl. It shows you what the request URL is. And look at here, we have the response that it actually ran. And so you can see that the node version is 4.2.3. And if you go through here, you can see all of the uh, environment variables that OpenShift created. And if you look through the code, you'll see where I reference like the, the MongoDB, um, the Redis password. You can see all these environment variables and the code references them um, just like so. So um, this Swaggered is a really cool um, utility and it helps document your APIs and helps you use them. Now um, let's go look at that um, SSH issue. So let's, let's clear this. Um, so what you can do is you can Red Hat command line SSH A put your name of your application my snow flake and it'll SSH into your app and you can kind of poke around and see what's going on look at the logs I'm an Emacs guy so I run Emacs uh, makes it real nice I can kind of see the lay of the land real quick um, see where all the node modules are where Node.js is um, the application is under app root and you can see down here you have your logs and here is your Node.js log which is probably what you're most interested in um, seeing. So um, so you can see where um, I'm uh, echoing the request that came into the server and you can see how long they took. Um, so you can kind of you know poke around in the on the server side by using the SSH. Um, one thing that's nice if you use something like Emacs is you don't get logged out of the SSH session. It keeps it alive. So when I'm working I pretty much keep it up and that way I can easily come down and, and view the, the logs and, and see what's going on here. Um, go scrolling through it. So um, hopefully that'll help you uh, get going to have your own server and um, be able to run your mobile app against your own server. 
So let's go ahead and use that app and just confirm um, that we're using it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in uh, with my uh, email account. If I can spell right and see if I can get a password without messing it up too bad. And see if we can register. And we did. And we get our profile. And um, we're good. So um, so just remember, the, the you can switch between parse.com or this happy OpenShift server. And it's, it's the same equivalency. If you register, you'll get an email. You can click on the email and you verify your, your email um, account. Um, when you want to reset your password, you get an email with a link that takes you to a form that you can reset your password. So you have the same equivalent workings, but you have complete control. And for instance, one of the things you can do is you can format those emails the way you want much easier. You can change the form for the reset the password. It's all under your control. So the question is, well, why did I um, go with OpenShift? Well, I went with OpenShift just because they are Red Hat, and that's a real good company, and they're solid, and it gives me quite a bit of functionality for free. I can go a long ways with this. Um, one thing you might want to look at in the documentation is I took um, a test that I put together with JMeter that I ran locally. Um, what I went through was um, uh, registering, logging in, um, um, uh, going to a restricted page, going to the profile and getting my information, updating the profile and logging out. And I ramped that up uh, in Blaze Meter to 50 concurrent users um, that are waiting one second between each of these commands. And you can look at a video I put together here showing that running. And you can see here... Um, kind of, uh, whoops, hit the wrong button, um, cancel that. You can see here um, that I was running 50 threads, and you can see that there was no errors. We ran with 50 virtual users, and we had less than a half a second, or, you know, 42 milliseconds uh, to do all of the um, responses. That was the average response time. So you can kind of look through these reports and see how well behaved that is. And if I can run 50 concurrent users banging on it like that, um, I'm pretty happy. So you can see how nice Blaze Meter is. I use their free account, but I think they have um, a lifetime free if you just use a certain amount of, of bandwidth or, or testing power. So anyway, I hope that um, gets you to where you have your own server for whatever app you're writing and I hope that you'll learn something from it um, and uh, enjoy.